chapter 6, starting with verse 6 to verse 8. Let me read. With what shall come before the Lord, and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before Him with burnt offerings, with cows a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, love, kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. In my last time, the preaching that the people like to hear are the weak, insipid variety that people will come in and out of their congregational meetings without feeling any conviction of the wrong they have done. Go on their way without embarrassment, and this is very tragic. Hence, the presence of a strong prophet named Micah. Micah is a prophet, and prophets are these people. Prophets are the people who will tell the truth no matter what. If you go before a king and you say something that the, that the king doesn't like at that particular time that they have, they can easily cut your head off. Prophets are the people who are willing to lay down their lives for the sake of truth. The Bible says, what does the Lord require of thee? Do justice. To do what is right. During the time, the people are no longer convicted of their sins. And in fact, it's a little similar to what we have right now. They are religious. They are never convicted of their sins, but they are present in the congregations every time. In fact, what they say is, let us, let us do a burnt offering of a year old calf. These are, these are traditions, these are sacrifices. These are the actions where their heart is not being involved. Church, pacifying God doesn't work. Not with sacrifices. Not with our own sacrifices. It says, how about thousands of rams? Let us light up the rams and let us start, you know, sacrificing them all throughout the How about 10,000 liters of oil? They would pour out the oil, make, like, make it like rivers. And this is supposed to be an acceptable aroma, an acceptable sacrifice for God. Can we do God any favor? And what can we do to earn the favor of God? That is the wrong question. God looks for repentant people there. When there is disobedience, acknowledge it, repent, and turn to Him. That's what God wants. The Hebrew people even say, How about our firstborn? Let us offer our firstborn to God. The fruit of our own body. That is not God wants. What God wants is to do justice or to do what is right. This is, this is very popular to each and every one of us. We go to our office, we get a paper plate. It's only a paper plate. Yeah. The company doesn't want But wait a minute, let me, uh, let me bring some pens because my, my daughter needs some pen for, for school. The company wouldn't want it. It's just a little 
Let us go to the, to the reality of truth. Let me say to every creature in this room, allow me, allow me for this time being to sing your God. You keep telling the truth. You keep preaching the truth. You keep standing for the word of God. Stop taking cues from the media. Stop taking cues from, from the majority of the people. From the popular opinion. Stop taking cues from leaders without integrity. Fall over yourself to the scripture and whatever the scripture says, that is what we speak. That is what we say and that is what we stand for. Why am I shouting? <laughs> Praise God. I like it when Pastor Carlos is smiling. I, I, I love it. <laughs> Even if I don't make sense as long as he, as he smiles and as long as he, you know, I, I, love, I love it. Smile. A council member, for example, for, not, for knowing the truth, stand for the truth and tell what is true. Pastor will stop. Keep on telling the truth. Do what is right. If you took the heat for not coming in your coin point or being dismissed from work or being um, allowed to go because your supervisor is asking you to clock him in and you didn't because you took your stand for, for your own integrity. Oh, what a way to lose the job. What a way to lose a child. We're starting to this year. This is not like me. <laughs> People are like. <laughs> let me uh, let me break some of this uh, tension by uh, giving you some of the things that you don't say to the cops when they pull you over, right? Number one is, I can't reach my license unless you hold my ear. <laughs> or, hey, is that a 9 mirror? Let me show you my 44 caliber magnum. <laughs> hey, you must be doing 125 miles an hour. Keep it up. Good job. <laughs> or, Sorry, officer, I didn't realize that I did not turn my, my radar detector. <laughs> so, I was going to be a cop, but I decided to finish high school instead. Yeah. What do you mean I have been drinking? You are know? the one who is the trained specialist here. Or, I thought you had to be in good physical shape before you become a cop. <laughs> you are you're in really great trouble. Or, how about this? You know, I was trying to catch up with the traffic. Did you notice there is nothing beside me? Because they are all over there and I was trying to catch them up. <laughs> or, you see, when, when I was trying to reach down for my bag of crap at the back seat, the pistol came off of my lap and it went in between the accelerator or the gas pedal. That caused me to speed up. <laughs> Try not to say any of those things. Do what is right. Do justice. I had been doing, thinking of doing this. When, when my son or my daughter would do an infraction, and none of them would accept their mistake. I would go get something, maybe, I don't know, maybe a stick, you know, a rod. And then I would lie down on the bed and ask them to take me. Somebody has to take the punishment. If they're not willing, maybe me. Or my wife is better. <laughs> Hallelujah! Yeah. 
He has told you, oh man, do what is good. Love kindness. Not only do what is right. Always follow it up with kindness. In, in the institute, in the Bible Institute, it is always right for us. It is always justifiable for us to fail those students who doesn't meet the standard of the institute. That is doing what is right. But the Bible didn't stop there. The Bible says, love kindness. <laughs>
Just like Horatio and Spapo, let us learn to love kindness, to do what is good. Look, at the time when Chicago got burned, he even took the courage, that motivation to help those people who suffered from the fire themselves. Second Samuel chapter 4 verse 4 says, Jonathan, the son of Saul, had a son who was crippled in his feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and fled. And as she left in her haste, he fell and became lame. And this son, this boy, was famous and his name is Mephibosheth. Remember Mephibosheth? Every time there is a change of king, then was Saul. And then it is the opportunity for David to take the throne. What happens is the king and all his, his kings, all his relatives, has to run and fled away. Because the incoming king, in order to avoid confusion in the future, will go and gather this king together with his kings or his relatives and cut all their head off in order not to start a rebellion, a takeover, a coup d'etat. In French, coup d'etat. <laughs> you know that famous movie. He has told you, man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? Do justice or do what is right. Love kindness. And walk humbly for your God. A famous verse, 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wickedness, ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sins and heal their land. You are God's people. We are God's people. Jesus set us the example. The Bible says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, that though he existed in the form of God, took it not upon him, his Godhead, and took the form of a servant. And being, form, being found in the form of a man, he humbled himself to death, even to the death on the cross. There is, there is this particular job that was given to Adam when he was placed in the middle of the garden. And his job is to put and give names to things, animals and plants. Nowadays, the doctors have found you know, all these ways and how to find names for sicknesses and diseases. Right? Now they have, you know, I don't know how you call them, but I have made an example the last time I preached. They put a name for, for, that, for that disease that doesn't have any cure or, or no medicine for it. They call it cancer. They have a name for it. But church, there is a name that is above all name. Yeah. And in this name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is God and Jesus is Lord. Yeah. He is above each and every disease. Yeah. Is God. Let me go to some applications. Hey, Amen. <laughs> the Bible says, Amen. 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 <laughs> Do what is right. Love kindness. Walk humbly before the God. This, in simple terms, is integrity. Integrity is when you are alone in the dark room and what do you do? Integrity is when you are in a certain place and there's nobody seeing and looking at you. What do you do? Integrity is when you are in need and then you saw something valuable on the table and there's nobody looking. 
what do you do? Integrity is when you look to a woman and nobody knows where your eyeballs are going. What do you do? Integrity is when you don't see any value of a thing and says, this doesn't you know, have any value to the company and let me take it home because we made it. Church, let us all be encouraged by the rewards of living a life of integrity. And I'll try to enumerate them tonight. Number one. One of the rewards of living a life of integrity is a sustained cultivation of exemplary character. You may not be totally aware of it, but it's going to come out naturally. Like, like a balloon full of helium, it's going to come out. Without even forcing it to come out, it's going to come out naturally. A sustained cultivation of exemplary character. Number two, a continued relief of clear conscience. You go to sleep at night and you, you turn and you toss, thinking that you need to make something, and you need to go back and say, I need to fix that. I was wrong. I need to admit I was wrong. I should have said it better this way. The voice of the conscience is eloquent. It is convincing. It is relentless. Hopefully, it is not seared. You know, when, 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 when a flesh is being seared, the senses are being lost. And you do not get convicted anymore by the sins of your doing. Especially if you do them over and over and over. We have to do what is right. A freedom of life and a sense of humor. Somebody says, like, if you don't laugh for a while, your lips gonna get stuck in my ear. And I've seen in this church so many people that have never laughed for a very, very long time. Three, a person of the light in the intimacy. In your intimacy with the Almighty. No, I'm not saying relationship. I mean intimacy. Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Shammah is when, when you are in need and you know that He is just right next to you and He is there. And He is not just there, He is there for you. Life of intimacy. The priceless inheritance of a lingering legacy. A life well lived is the life that lives a lingering legacy. I hope, and I do pray, that when I am in the grave, when I am down there, there my son and my daughter will not remember the things that I told them, but remember the things that I have shown them. Because these are the ones that linger. You keep telling your child, do this, do this, do not do that, do not do that, do this, do this. After a couple of days, they forgot it. Show them what is done. And it speaks to their minds. Even if you are not there. A life of legacy. Another word, the real privilege of being a mentor. The rare privilege of being a mentor. I'm not talking about being a leader. I'm not talking about being a teacher. I'm talking about somebody that you look up to. Church, you may not know this, but each and every member of this church, body of believers, is looking for people whom they can model. 
and it could be you. I'm not talking about age. You could be as young as, young as those people, those uh, young people. Those young people, let me tell you this. Some of those people older than you are looking up to you because you are their models of God. You teach some of us when we go through life, when we go through difficulties, how you handle it. Six, you Lastly, but not the least. Hey, man! Hallelujah! There you go. The crowning reward, the crowning reward of finishing the work. It is always my, is it Jesus? It is, it is always my, my desire that each, each and every pastor of this church even, even those who are desiring to become pastors would finish well. Because I have known some who have served for a long, long time and at the end failed. They left the church, they went their own way, they went back to secular life. To be able to finish. I was telling one of the pastors that when I got a chance to pray for them, I, I tried to spell out their names to God. Some of them are even funny, you know. Some of them are, are hilarious, you know. Lord, please give me more hair. Give me to... The reflection is hurting us. <laughs> or, please restore his, his memory. There's so much in him that we want to learn. Or give him more years. <clears throat> give him more wisdom. Allow him to be, become more available for us. So that the time that he is remaining will become fruitful and we will be able to absorb him before we pass on. Take the pain out of their bodies. So that they can go ahead and, and join us with all the, uh, the things that we need to do. Visiting church people. Visiting church members. I was telling one of the pastors also this afternoon that my heart is being broken. Every time I know that I have to do, and I can't do it because my hands are tied, my feet are tied with my work. But we have freedom to do. Oh man, what does the Lord require of you? First, do what is right. Do justice. Second, love kindness. Third, walk humbly with your love. Let's pray. Lord, so we want to be well with ourselves. To live a life like this, help us to come to terms with things we need to address. May we not run from them or deny them. Just let you do what you can do. Allow us to live a life of integrity. Allow us to be sons and daughters of God. Sons and daughters of the Almighty God. Who would love justice. Who would do kindness and we'll walk humble. We pray this in